Hey TV Nation, thank you for joining us in this live stream and today I will show you how to create an automatic carousel with Divi and we'll also use the slick JavaScript library along with the ice cream shop layout pack. So if you haven't checked that out yet, make sure that you do. I've mentioned the link in the description below and if you're not an elegant themes member yet, make sure that you check out Divi. I've mentioned a link to the product page where you can go ahead and discover everything for yourself. So without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so let's start off by taking a quick look at the ice cream shop layout pack. So this is the overall look and feel that you can expect from it. And if you want to lay your hands on it, you can go to elegantthemes.com slash layouts. And over here, you can find all of the different layout packs that come with Divi for free. And if you scroll down, you'll come across the ice cream shop layout pack. And if you click on it, you will see all of the layouts that are available for you guys to use for free. So you can view the live demo of these layouts in advance if you want to do that before installing it on your WordPress website. So by just clicking on the blue button over here and over here you can discover all of these layouts and see what they look like. Um, now within this live stream tutorial we'll show you guys how to create an automatic carousel and what does that look like. Let's take a quick look. So over here we have it installed on our page so it goes automatically and it changes every two seconds or so and let's take a quick look at the outcome on smaller screen sizes. So this is what you can expect on uh, a mobile device so it looks similar but we have less items showing up and let's get started so the first thing you will need to do is add the slick javascript library to your website and the way to do that is by going to your Divi theme options and then going to the integration tab over here and we'll need to add a script to the head tags of our blog. So I've added it over here, um, but you can find this specifically in the blog post, which I've mentioned in the description below as well. So just go to that blog post and you can copy this script or just read it off the screen um, and just add it to the head of your website. All right. So the next step is creating a page and we're going to use one of the ice cream shop layout pack uh, layouts. And let's just add a new page over there. And I'm going to use the menu page because I feel like that's where it fits really well. And I'm just going to publish the page and enable the Divi Builder. And I want to say hi to everyone in the comment section. I hope you guys will like this tutorial. Um, and if you have any questions, make sure that you uh, leave them on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, I see Cortez is with us on YouTube. Uncle Social is there. Um, I wish you guys a very nice day and I hope you really like this tutorial. And let's get to it. All right, so over here, we're going to choose one of the pre-made layouts. And of course, we'll browse through our pre-made layouts to get a free layout there. And we'll use the ice cream shop layout back and we'll choose the menu page by clicking on the green button that says use this layout. And then we'll wait for it to upload to our page. Takes little time as you can see. And here we have it. Now I'm going to add a new section uh, to my page and I'm kind of going to dedicate this entire section to the carousel, um, but I'll first start by adding a title as you can see over here. Uh, I have a title, so I'll add that as well. And uh, the style that we're using for the modules that appear within the slider um, matches the ice cream shop layout bag, but you're really free to use any kind of module you want. So you have to uh, bear in mind that every module we add is going to be part of the automatic carousel later on. So you can place the, anything you want in it. So it could be a logo, a company logo, or anything like that. And if you hover it, it stops as you can see over here. And then if you unhover it, it starts going again. So it's really nice. And the fact that it looks good on smaller screen sizes as well is definitely a big advantage. So I'm just going to add a regular section over here. And I'll start by adding a background color to it. All right. I'm also adding a bottom divider. These are just for the sake of um, styling my section and making sure that it looks good. Um, but this is not the essence of the post. But um, over here, I'm going to select a white color and I'm also going to set 10 VW for the height. 
and this will just make sure um, that it looks good across all screen sizes so it will look very similar as you can see over here and over here it has the same kind of height going on and then I'm going to go to the spacing settings as well and I'm going to add some button padding um, I'm again using 10VW and it's just necessary for this specific outcome to take place but uh, feel free to play around with all of these settings and then I'm going to add my first row and I'm going to use a row with one column and I'm going to add a text module to it and I'm going to insert some copy and then I'll move on to, to the heading text settings and over here I'm going to paste the settings and go over them with you guys so these just match um, the layout back really well. So I'm using prompt for the heading to font, um, ultra light for the font weight, and then I'm using different um, values for the text size. So 60 pixels on desktop, 40 pixels on tablet, and 25 pixels on phone, and 1.2 EM for the line height. And then I'm also going to go to the sizing settings over here. So again, these are the settings that I took over from the layout back. And I just felt like it was a nice add-on. And I'm going to center the module as well over here. So I have a max width of 800 pixels and I've centered, centered my module. And now we can start adding the um, carousel. So the auto automatic one. And for that, we'll need a row with one column. And this is really important. Um, the way this will work is you'll add the modules um, vertically and they will show up horizontally. So um, you don't have to reserve uh, a separate column for each one of the modules that you want to show up. You just use one column and that's the way to go. And over here, I'm going to open the sizing settings first. As you can notice on the screen, um, it's taking up the entire width of the screen. And to do that, we'll go to the sizing settings over here and I'm going to modify the width to 100% and use 100% for the max width as well. And this will allow the row to touch both sides of the screen. And then I'll go to the spacing settings and I'm going to add 50 pixels to the top margin. And this is just to have some space between the title and the automatic cursor. Um, and I'm also going to remove the default top and bottom padding of the row by adding zero pixels to both options. Um, then I'll move on to the advanced tab and over here in the overflow settings, I'm just going to make sure that these are hidden. And that, that will just uh, ensure us that no horizontal scrolling on our page will happen, uh, which is really important, I think. And now that we've set all of the row settings, we can go to the column settings and over here, we're just going to add two CSS classes to our column. So what this means is we're turning the column container itself into the automatic carousel. Uh, so not the row, but the column inside the row. And that's why we'll need to add two classes. So we'll use ice cream uh, items as one of the CSS classes. And then the slider CSS class is part of um, the slick JavaScript library. So this is um, really important to add here as well. And now we can start adding our slider items. And we've used a uh, call to action module over here, but again, you can place any kind of module you want and style it however you want to. Uh, in the next part of this post, we're going to add the jQuery code and the CSS code is really minimal. Uh, so we're using the best of Divi in combination with this library to you know, create a stunning outcome. But uh, I just wanna mention that you can make this work with anything you want, but for the sake of making this look really good with the ice cream shop layout back, we'll recreate this specific example. So the next part, we'll be adding the code. Um, if you're just interested in making the technique work, make sure that you check that out afterwards because this video is afterwards available as well, or just follow along um, the tutorial right now.
All right, so I'm just going to add the first module and then I'm just going to check if you guys have any questions up until now. I don't see any questions here. Um, but I'm sure you guys are following along and let's continue. Let's not waste any time. So the first thing we're going to do over here is we'll add the content and we're using responsive content. Let me just add it over here. So the default content includes the title, the button, and the body. And then if I switch over and hover, I've replaced the content with an empty character. So you can find these um, on Google by just typing empty character, or you can go to the blog post. I've added one to the post as well that you can use. So just make sure that you add that over here if you want to obtain this kind of result. As you can see, the text disappears once we hover it. And so yeah, but that isn't necessary. If you don't want it, you don't have to do it. <laughs> and the next part is adding a link to the button over here. Really important because without a link over here, the button will not show up. And obviously you don't want to see what you're doing. And then I'm going to go to the gradient background. And over here, what we're using is a gradient background. And let me just grab the background really quick for you guys. So here we have it. This is the gradient background in the default state. So we're using this color code and a completely transparent color for the second color. Um, a radial gradient type top radial direction, 35% for the start position and 35% for the end position. And then we're also making sure that we're placing the gradient above the image. And then on hover, we're just removing the um, gradient background entirely. And then we'll also add a background image of our choice. And we're just uh, keeping the settings the way they are. All right. And now I can move on to the title text settings over here and style the title. I'm just going to add it here. Here we have the title settings. Again, you can find all of these uh, specifics in the blog post by going to it. I've mentioned it in the description below, but these are the settings that we're using. If you just want to pause the video, uh, you can get these. So prompt for the title font, um, text size is 2VW on desktop, 4VW on tablet, and 5VW on phone. The title line height is 2VW on desktop, 3VW uh, on tablet, and 4VW on phone. And then I'm also going to add the body text settings to this module, All right? So these are the settings we're using. Um, the text size over here is 0 0.9 VW on desktop, 2 VW on tablet, 2.5 VW on phone. And then the body line height is 1 VW on desktop, 2 VW on tablet, and 3 VW on phone. And then I'm also going to style the button of my module. All right, so what I've done here is I've enabled the use custom styles for button and then I've used uh, 0 0.9 VW for um, desktop 1.5 VW for tablet and 2 VW for phone. I've used a white button text color, a black button background color, and I've changed the color on hover in this kind of pinky tone. Um, then I've also changed the border radius to zero pixels, two pixels for the letter text, uh, letter spacing, uh, prompt for the button font, uh, I've enabled uppercase, and over here, this might be important, I've added um, some top margin here, so 19 VW on desktop, um, 30 VW on tablet, 45 VW on phone, and then the top padding is 1 VW, 1 VW, 2 VW, 2 VW, 
and then these change on smaller screen sizes so um it's 2vw for the top and bottom on tablet and 3vw for the top and bottom on phone and then we're using 4vw for the left and the right and 5vw on phone all right and then i'll go to the sizing settings and over here i'm going to shrink the size of my module a little bit. Let me just add it. I'm using 23VW. And this is actually, it's not really necessary because the way the automatic carousel works is it will determine for itself how much space is needed. But I just want to um, shrink the size of the module so it looks better when you're working inside the builder, which I do think is important as well. Um, and I've also modified the height. Um, I'm using 23VW on desktop, 50VW on tablet, and 80VW on phone. Um, and then I'll go to the spacing settings over here. And let me just grab those really quick. So I'm using 1VW uh, for the left and right margin. Um, and this is really important because as you can see over here, there's some space between uh, the different elements within the uh, automatic slider. Um, and to make sure that space is there, you'll have to add some uh, left and right margin. So we're using one VW, but you can determine for yourself how much space um, is between the different elements in that automatic carousel. So we're also using some top padding and that's just to have some space uh, above the title over here. And we're using 2VW on, on desktop, 4VW on tablet and 6VW on phone. So again, you can find all of these numbers, all of these options uh, written down in the blog post, uh, which I've mentioned in the description below. So if you want to recreate this exact example, uh, you should definitely go there. All right, so we've finished the first module. And what's left to do right now is clone this as many times as you want or place other modules in it. And bear in mind, the number of uh, duplicates in your column will appear in your uh, automatic carousel. So I'm just cloning it four times in this case. So I'll have five. Um, in total, let me just see. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And of course, you'll have to change the content of each one of them, uh, the gradient background, the button link, and so on. But now we can turn this into uh, that beautiful automatic carousel. And before we do that, I'm just going to go and see if you guys have any questions. All right, I'm seeing a lot of comments, so I'm just going to wait for them to load a little. Does this work with videos? It should work with any kind of module. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I haven't tried it, but it should work with any kind of module you add to it. Someone's asking why don't we add a new module for the carousel? Maybe we'll do like we're currently busy working on um, the WooCommerce update and the theme builder. So that's taking up a lot of time. But, you know, who knows what's next? We'll definitely come with uh, more updates. Someone's asking, is it possible to place it in a small, let's say, one third column if you want to use it as a logo carousel it's probably possible i haven't tested it yet but the the technique is the same so i'm assuming it will will definitely work so i would recommend um trying it out so just add a three column row and place uh the css class in the column that you want uh to place um the logos in so definitely try that out i'm i'm pretty positive it will it will work without any problem all right, um, but you'll have to set the number of um, of logos you want to appear. So the more you want to appear at the same time on your screen, um, the smaller they will get. So you can adjust that in the code as well if you want to do that. All right, so let's get to it. So 
Um, next thing I'm going to do over here is add a new row. And we're using this row for um, the code that we're adding. So that's the only purpose this row has. And we need two um, code modules in total. You can actually place all of the code inside one code module, but I just like separating the CSS from the jQuery. So I'm just going to start with um, the jQuery and I'll just add a code module over here. And I'm just going to copy and paste the script. So this is what it looks like so this is also over here you can see a breakpoint um, and this allows only two items to show on smaller screen sizes uh, for the sake of the width that you have to work with um, you can determine how many slides you want to show over here uh, you can determine the speed as well so definitely look into that these are really easy to understand in my opinion um, and you can play around with these values. And then um, I know that Slick um, JavaScript library has a lot of other options as well that you can play around with to create other kind of sliders. But if you want to recreate the automatic one, um, stay true to this and it will definitely work. All right, so this is the first code module that we have and let's add the other one. And here we'll just add the page. Um, CSS code. Let's just add it over here. All right, so this is necessary for it to work. Uh, you can also add it to your page if you want to. The reason why I've added um, it to a code module instead is um, because I, I wanted to export it and include the JSON file for free for you guys to download in the blog post. So if you guys just want to grab the JSON, um, make sure that you do that. I've mentioned the link in the description below. And uh, you'll have to make sure that you add the slick uh, JavaScript library to the head of your website, though. So that was the first step within this tutorial. So definitely make sure that you do that. But I've mentioned that in the blog post as well. But um, if you're um, recreating it from scratch, you can just add the CSS code to your custom CSS uh, page box over here as well. So now it should work. Let me just exit the Visual Builder really quick. And over here, voila. Here we have it, and if I inspect the elements, this is what we have on smaller screen sizes. So there we have it. Let me just see one, one, one more time if there's any questions. Um, someone's asking, can you demo this with um, the different models? Um, let me just do that really quick. I'm just going to replace these modules with um, a uh, logo, for instance, just to show you guys how really easy it is to place whatever you want in it. So I'm just going to add this over here so we can preview it afterwards. All right, so I'm just going to remove all of these modules and I'll add, maybe I'll add, I'll see if I have um, some placeholders in my media library. I'll just add an image, for instance. All right. So, I mean, that this does the job, right? So again, important is to add a bit of space to the lef left and the right side. So I'm just using one VW to the left and the right side. And then I'm going to clone this. And then also try it out with video modules so you guys are aware of whether it works or not. Let me see how many I have. So one, two, three, four, five. So I definitely need to have five or more um, modules in my column. Why? Because um, the carousel is including four different items in, in its normal state. So obviously, if you want it to pass on and uh, show another element you will need more than four. So in this case, I'm just using five. Let me just see again if I think that's Correct, let me just go Over here As you can see it works exactly the same Let me just add a video module here as well. So honestly the versatility of this um, method is 
really nice to have, I would say. And it definitely helps you combine the best of um, some of the amazing, powerful uh, JavaScript libraries that are out there in combination with Divi's built-in options. So let me just... So here we have the video, so someone, I remember someone asking it. And by the way, they can also just hold it and drag it wherever they want. And as soon as you release it and click somewhere else, it will start, you know, rolling again. All right. So I think that was it. If you guys don't have any more questions. All right. So that was all for this live stream tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And we hope that you're enjoying this ongoing Divi Design Initiative, where we try to put something extra into your design toolbox each and every week. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.